You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast, folks. I'm Brian Call. I've got I'm in a room with uh, Ryan Lampers. We got Joe and Dennis from Initial Ascent, and we're in the Initial Ascent headquarters here in Caldwell, Idaho. We were here yesterday, toured the shop a bit. New space. Yes. You know? Exciting. It's it's pretty cool. Yes. And it is. uh just wanted to quickly, you know, have a, a we're we basically snuck away from the uh bear tour. The bear tour event right now. We gotta get back soon because Mark Livesey might say something without us there. He absolutely no is saying things right now that <laughs> we watched you walk out the too. door and- without accountability. He, he's a loose cannon. <clears throat> so, yeah, we got to get back he's over there. showing everybody our spots again. That's right. Like yeah, he likes probably to do. so. <laughs> uh, so, but while we're here, we wanted to get it in a room with you guys and talk about a little bit about Initial Ascent and what's going on. You've made quite a few changes over the years. And here we are today. And Ryan and I have been running the packs now for... I mean, myself for a few years, Ryan for at least a year. I switched over last season. Yeah. Like the whole season. Yep, yeah. With it. And this year. It's ironic because I was introduced to the pack from Ryan mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. And I have to admit that I hated the design of the 6K in the beginning. Not hate. It just... It doesn't have what you guys have done to it now on the bag. Yeah. But the frame from day one, when I put it on, I was climbing the Wasatch almost every day because you're right across the street from yeah. me. And I was wearing the packs I was using before. I was even testing some some various packs. And uh, I, got, I got the initial ascent and I took the same load, which is about 80 pounds, and I put it into the pack. And it immediately felt like I was carrying 20% less or so than I was with other bags. It was kind of shocking, you know, having worn almost every pack on the market here and there to feel that performance gain. It was pretty cool. And then I decided, well, what would it feel like if I put like 120 or 140 pounds in it? It, it carried better at those loads than any pack I'd used previously. So uh, at that point, it was like, okay, what do I not like? Some of the bag design, Mm -hmm. but the frame was legit. legit. Although I did have trouble when I put it on, finding the fit over and over again. You know, I'd buckle it on and I'd go and it'd take me five minutes of adjusting and trying to get it to to go on. I talked about it way back when. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turned out, my belt just wasn't right. It was too too small. Mm-hmm. I needed a larger belt. You underestimated the size of your waist. Yeah, and as soon as I got the <laughs> new belt on and and changed the padding a little bit in the lumbar, yeah. which is adjustable, voila, I was I was done. It was it was every every sort of fit issue that I was slightly struggling with disappeared. So fast forward to now, just another experience brad has been also using the initial ascent and he was having a little trouble with it feeling just right then he removed some pads Mm -hmm. from the lumbar and he's like wow night and day so fit is a bit of a challenge um to to make it just right and i think sometimes we can judge uh, a pack you know and its performance in in you know unfairly because we haven't you haven't actually got it on right mm-hmm. you haven't got it quite fitted right yeah and that can be a challenge especially for someone who has very little experience they order a pack shows up in the mail and they're like man i don't know why but i yeah can't figure it out yeah, yeah and that's i think one of the things you know you talk about specifically on the belt we spent a lot of time designing that so that it was customizable Right. So you can float that lumbar up an inch or two and you can remove the padding, figure out what's going to be the right thing. We even know, I mean, like Dave Baronio originally, he was having some issues 
where it felt like it was rubbing on him a little bit. So he just went in there and trimmed it off a little bit, you know, to give it in no issues at all. So I think being able to go in and make adjustments, because we're all built different, right? Yeah. The four of us all built different, you know, um, there's a nice added piece on that lumbar, that just that hip belt design. I do think that certain packs have, are more universally acceptable and easy to fit on people than others. I've had certain pack companies and packs I've used where, you know, you almost need a custom guy to like get it all fitted to you. Yeah. Then there's the packs, like the stone, admittedly, I feel like almost 90% of the people it kind of works with right off the bat. I think the initial ascent is the same. Almost everybody can kind of grab it and get it pretty well dialed in. And some way more complicated. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite different. So I do, I do think that's important. I remember when we were running, <clears throat> I was running that uh, seat pack. Mm. You needed a mini uh, like class. I never, I never could figure that one out. I, I wanted to, yeah, but I couldn't do it. It was way too complicated. Couldn't get it fitted. Yeah, I used it to pack a full goat out, all the meat and the hide and everything. It was, it was one of the toughest pack outs I'd ever done. Yeah, you know, so packs matter. They're, they're massive. They're, they're. I mean, they're kind of the core of what we're doing on a backpack hunt, and uh, to see. To, to get it on our backs, to feel the performance, and then now to see initial ascent growing because it was pretty obscure not too long ago mm -hmm. where not very many people knew about it. Fast forward, the word's getting out. Yep. Yeah. So how does that feel? Feels a whole lot better to be sitting here than in Dennis's garage or my shop, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we moved out, so we moved into this place about, I think it was December 1. Yeah, December 1st. And, um, yeah, of, of this last year. And I think for a couple of days, I just sat a chair right in the middle of my garage, a big <laughs> RV space, you know, and I looked at the emptiness and really appreciated it. <laughs> and I think the one other person that appreciated it was my, my wife. So oh, we yeah. weren't having so many strangers come over uh, on appointment only um, yeah. to, to f try packs on and that sort of thing. So this, this is a, a much better It is, and it's situation. I mean, the location is perfect. Mm -hmm. Being in Caldwell, you know, it's center for you and I from from our homes. And then this area out here is absolutely exploding. I mean, yeah. This is like one of the hottest areas right now. So we, we we're fortunate mm -hmm. uh, to be able to find this location. What is the customer feedback been as the word is getting out and you're getting pictures from hunters and things like that as they kind of start to filter in? What's What has been, what's working, what's not working? Yeah, well, I mean, I think from a working perspective, I think just an awareness was a big part of it, right? People just weren't aware of it. They hadn't tried it. They'd heard it a little bit here and there. But I think as the word has gotten out, you know, the general consensus, people love the styles that we did on the 8K, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely loved it. You know, they love the horseshoe zipper. They love the roll top. Those aspects were probably one and two for sure, you know, as to what they yeah. really requested. And Dennis and I, we knew this for a long time with the 4K and the 6. Um that those were areas that we had to come back and modify. And then you guys gave us tons of good feedback as we designed the 8K on that. So it really feels like the features across the board on the bag has been up, you know, stepped up. They caught up to the frame. Yeah. It's, that's a good way of saying like, it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. You know, because the frame has always kind of separated itself and stood on its own and mm -hmm. it's performed. But we would get feedback as like, oh, when are you guys going to come out with roll top? You know, when are you going to come out with the beaver tail? I like to carry that rifle on the side, you know, all of those kinds yeah. of things that we took their feedback, took your guys' feedback. So really, I mean, at the expo this year, it was fantastic. And it, and that was on the 8K, that was on the 5K, as well as the 3K, just across the board. Um, people loved it. Yeah. And, you know, as far as the frame and suspension goes, I mean, that that was, that was pretty right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we... The frame is basically the same um, as it has been for the past probably year and a half or yeah. so. Yep. Um, we did modify the the hip belt and shoulder straps just just a touch on the new model. Mm -hmm. um, we thickened up the shoulder straps just a little bit, but the shape is still the same. We thought we nailed it on the shape because it does fit men and women really well. Yeah. And, yeah. and to have a set of shoulder straps fit uh, not only men but women as well. That's that's a big thing, and it's 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 kind of odd to see that. Um, and then with our our release uh, 
and the, the way we tighten the hip belts now, mm -hmm. um, the padding is still all the same, still customizable lumbar uh, pad, but you've, you've got uh, a little bit different with the ladder locks on the, on the front. So it locks at the end of the belt versus locking at the buckle itself. And, uh, so we, we, uh, I think we nailed it with, with yeah. that. It's, yeah. uh, it, it fits a lot <clears throat> more people well. And I know you're happy because we listened to you guys on the slots on the lid. So that now actually slides, oh, the lid, right? So that's been a really good feedback on that too. Yeah, I like the fact that you guys are taking that feedback and running with it. And this is where we're at. We got this, you know, we 8K. There's not a whole lot of packs that fit a lot of the hunts that Brian and I do. They're 10, 12 days. Right. We've been promoting that for a while now. And, you know, in the beginning, a 5,900 was good for me back in the day, but we weren't doing 10-day trips. Right. Mm -hmm. So the size and the roll top of this one, um, it just fits our style. And I think a lot more people are kind of taking this style and running with it, you know, these extended trips, um, maybe not shorting themselves on gear, packing rafts. Mm -hmm. That's where this 8K shines. You know, not only does the frame carry probably... I would say it's it's probably the best with heavy weight. It's a stiffer frame, carries weight extremely well. But now you got the bag to go with it, and it is tailor made for the trips that we take. Um, ten day trips require a lot of space, a lot of food goes in there, a lot of gear, so a lot of bulk. Yeah, you know, not necessarily weight sometimes, but bulk. You know, a raft can be only five pounds, but it's like another Spacious. sleeping bags yeah. in in bulk. So when I look at um, the bag now, adding that third buckle to the frame in the center on the sides. On the 8K, yeah. Oh, dude, love that. Love that, having that ability. It's just one more area to anchor that bag in place and, and basically to strap a rifle or a tripod or a spot or anything to the side that we want you don't have to undo you know one of the only two there mm -hmm. y your load doesn't shift with with that and it was just sitting there mm. to have right. a buckle attached but then like you said the roll top lid to be able to have the other attachment down below you know ryan's like what if you put a did this you know yeah. and you guys were like i think dennis you you came up with some of that and to be able to because before, sometimes the buckles on the side didn't go straight to the frame. They went from the bag to the bag, which just didn't work. Now, with all these changes, the bag, it just uh, gotten better and better. And to be able to pull the roll top down and then cinch it down mm -hmm. and hold that sort of hot doggy type yeah, shape at the top worrying. from like, yeah, mm -hmm. shifting around, it's just big. So, you know, this year I really saw... I was, we were out hunting with Brady Miller and Brady shoots that big old Monster. bull moose with Lampers and I in Alaska. And <clears throat> he, he and I, cause Ryan was off hunting as Ryan does. Uh, I was chasing grizzly bears out of camp. That's pretty much what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my job. Uh, actually, that's what we want though, is when Brady and I went off after this bull moose, we got so many days. We don't want, we don't need all three of us there. Right. You know, I'm a camera guy. We're trying to capture this Brady, Brady. Uh, it's, it, it's his turn. It's his moose at, to, uh, send Ryan out. And if, if Ryan could have found another one, which he did, the problem is he's just a little too far. We'd have, we'd have been able to, uh, get a second moose while we were on the first moose. So, um, but anyway, that left Brady and I packing it out the two of us and uh you know keeping it it was about 2.7 miles just walking by foot down to the pickup point where the where the moose was going to get picked up so brady and i carried the meat out and ryan showed up for the last load which was uh nice because i think there was nine loads total roughly including the antlers yeah 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 we were we were separated by quite a few miles because our our original base camp was six and a half miles from the dead bull. Mm. So where I was sitting, 
Um, I watched this all go down. I got a bird's eye view of these guys taking that giant. Um, now my job was to pull camp, our spike camp, head back to base camp, get these guys some food because they'd been out for a couple of days, yeah. get them some power because they'd been out for Electricity, a while, yeah. um, and then get back to help and take and that a wood last stove. Load. The wood stove, I think, was the yeah because they were soaked, soaking wet at that point. By the time sweat and it rained. Ready. Like it just happened to rain the day after we killed the bull. And so the whole pack out was soaked. All that bushwhacking, all the creek crossings, this the tundra swampy stuff, you come back, repeat it, come back. And our tent had no stove. And so you're just getting wet. And then there was no way to dry out because it was back at the, the base camp. So when Ryan showed up, he was like our savior, you know, food, sugar. sugar. You know, it's like Jesus came over the yeah, hill. And, and, and a wood stove, we could charge, you know, our maps and devices and headlamps, which are all like fading. Mm. So, yeah. And uh, it's funny as I, I felt like I, I brought them several days worth of food because we had, you know, we had a lot of uh, meat loads to get down to the lake. And I swear I brought Brian like <laughs> six or eight packets of electrolytes, right? And he's like, where's all the other ones? <laughs> I remember that because that's for that's one of his days of electrolytes. I was like, that's like a week's worth for me. But <laughs> he uh he has his electrolytes bagged individually and there's like six or eight packets oh, man. per day. I I sweat. I don't think I sweat a lot. I it's you know, it's a genetic thing. But we're side note, we're doing this carnivore kind of thing, playing around with it, testing it. And it has completely changed the electrolyte intake so i gotta wonder what's going on there i, I haven't quite got a, a good answer as i kind of do some research on it but hmm. increased or decreased decreased i don't really? i just got the salt on the meat mm -hmm. and i might drink like one element or something in a day like mm -hmm. a little salt packet and that's it <laughs> i'm still sweating a lot we still have to test it like in a super grueling situation can yeah. i can i do that do i need carbs do i need more salt in the past, I've needed a lot of salt. I've also needed quite a bit of glucose at the top after trying to keep up with Ryan. Like, say we're chasing, like I can keep up if I, but I'll sweat copious, like intense amounts of sweat. I'll get to the top, I'll be a little shaky, and I'll be like uh, just needing salt. Bad. Yeah, got to replenish. Yeah. You know, Ryan doesn't really sweat that much, um, and I think as he's hiking, he's not when when if I go. Just a pace slower, so he'll beat me to the top by five minutes or something like that. We're both burning, I think, in the same same way, fat burning mostly. Mm -hmm. But if I try to keep his pace for four hours or six hours to get there at the same time, let him let him, you know, get there, shave that ten minutes off that overall summit. At that point, I'm tapping into a red line mm -hmm. that whole time. And it has a whole different physiological response, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and vice versa. Cause if I try to go as slow as Brian is, yeah. me and Brad both, like if we, if we, the slower you hike, the That's more taxing, taxing it is, it's, it, you get tired quicker. Whereas if we keep this striding it out, just cruising wind in your face type pace, it's easy breezy. But when we slow it down, like when I'm behind somebody. I get more physically tired, especially yeah. when I'm behind him. It's so weird. Like you're, you're not in your zone. Your zone, right. your stride. You're not yeah. in your, 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 your zone. And, uh, same thing on a downhill, for example, you know, on a downhill, I don't even sweat. I can cruise. I don't get tired. And if the load is heavy, it's, it's fine. And, you know, Ryan, uh, and will, will be a whole opposite experience. Yeah. I would rather, slower. I'd rather go uphill all day long. Every day, then so those weird. heavyweight downhill trips makes me sweat with you on that one. He'll be dripping sweat. You know, it'll. I'll beat him to the bottom, and I'll be waiting. And it's like this is on. This is weird because I'll put on a jacket because I'm cold because mm -hmm. I'm not exerting. So I think that everybody's a little different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I have a. I the slower pace is more like muscle endurance. The faster pace is more like sort of cardio, maybe or, or something like that. It just, I don't know. It's a zone that works for me. Yeah. 
and uh the trying to hunt with brady and ryan it's not easy brady's like six brady's strides are impressive he's oh, big, he covers some ground like a moose <laughs> <laughs> wow. but anyway major tangent getting back to the subject we carried the the moose out and i pulled the initial ascent bag off my pack and got it right down to the meat shelf mm-hmm. loaded the moose quarters are huge right and so loading that right on there loading the weight you know on the upper third right. of the pack board of the of the frame and strapping it down with all the strapping options that that the initial ascent comes with it's powerful and it's fast and it holds that weight up where i needed it to have it efficiently carry the best over my hips and the angle everything's great and the frame is so stiff and distributing the weight not so much on my shoulders not crushing just one part of me it's distributed around my hips it just felt great i'd throw it on brady's over there still messing around with his pack trying to get the meat shelf on try and then it was just it's such a large animal and the meat is so unwieldy and he's trying to strap it on it didn't work well at all and he was jealous he was jealous of the pack i was running when it came time to just ferry meat out yeah you know earlier you know i think we had some discussions about it when the pack's not very heavy you know he's like "I, i like how it feels but then when it came time to do the real man work it was tough so we did this back and forth and then the last load we had to get the moose rack out and it's like 60 62 inches or 61, something like that. It was just under 63 inches, but it was, what, 72, 73 pounds? Yes. Wow. Of awkward weight hmm. and yeah. tall, you know? Yeah. I mean, and Brady's- we're in thick country. Like, there's alders everywhere. So, you got to weave that thing in and out. So, going sideways didn't really make a whole lot of sense. That was just going to be frustrating. You hung up all day. Yeah. And being able to take that moose, we try to put it on his pack vertical. But as soon as we tried to strap it all down, I just the the head just would just sort of swing and go horizontal. Mm. And you know, we messed around. I'm like Brady, just use my pack. You know, my pack has that stiff frame. It's it's just built for this. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we throw it on there. You know, just with the existing straps and options available, strap that moose head to the uh, you know in a vertical fashion. Tried to shift the nose over so that the uh, wings of the tip of the antler, so it was fairly balanced left to right on his back, up and down. Thankfully, his feet weren't hitting it as he walked, and it wasn't dragging on the ground. I think for me, it might have come close. I was say, for <laughs> me, yeah, it definitely would have. Yeah. And but we got it vertical, <clears throat> and it just stuck. He put it on. He's like, "Oh, wow, this feels." nice and it's unwieldy right but but it is fixed on that thing and distributed on his back and he carried that sucker through the bush and you can see on we have lots of video you know as he's pushing through uh it worked quite well pretty shocked but upon the completion of that trip you know he's a believer yeah in that initial ascent pack in that design for for certain jobs especially and uh it's cool for people like a, like a Brady to, you know, firsthand experience it and see where the utility of it just stands above other options mm-hmm. and just going to make his next hunt similar to that better yeah. than it was. And I, I was like, Brady, I've been using this pack to make four trips down, down to this, this place the whole time. And I used his pack that last trip to carry a quarter out. And I'm like, damn it. Why didn't you just bring a better pack, Brady? Like <laughs> there's that feeling like I could feel all total. Now it's hard also to get a pack built for Brady to fit me, but I had no problem really getting the initial ascent readjusted to go yeah. onto Brady pr- pretty easily. I mean, I got his pack to work. It just, it just definitely f- you felt the load, the full brunt of the weight in a way I wasn't with the initial ascent. So, and especially, you know, I think it's the height of those moose quarters, even the shoulders, you know, and the, and, and the high knees, they're just, they're so tall. Mm-hmm. So you have weight that's extended 
it's not just down at the bottom in the middle. It is very high. Mm. So that stiffer um, frame system is night and day difference, mm. night and day. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just like throwing you back and forth and flexing on your back extremely. And Brady's eyes were opened on that one. That was like, holy smokes, there's a better mm. way. Hey, if you like our show and you want to support us, you can do that by shopping at Stealthy Hunter, a great partner of ours. They sell rifle covers, which we use on every single hunt. They sell glassing pads. They sell supplements. They got CBD gummies, other products over there. Check it out. Make sure you use the code GRITTY. And now, back to the show. I'll tell you, the one of the worst loads to carry is an initial ascent pack with the weight at the bottom. I'll tell you, that is a horrible load, by the way. That's any pack. It is any pack, but I swear, this pack... I don't know what it is. Like when I don't, when I just am lazy and it's a 8K. So it's a, it's a, it's a 50 gallon drum, you know, and you throw, if you just throw stuff in without thinking in the head and loading it properly. And I have that weight, heavy kind of stuff just sagging toward the bottom. Yeah. I'll feel, cause I think it just has more capacity. So it's easier to make that mistake and to have the load too low. And then you're, I'm like, wow, this feels really heavy today. Same load as yesterday, but it feels heavy today. Get out, stop, rearrange it, push it up, and it's like it feels 20 pounds lighter. Yeah, and when we designed the bags, all three of them, they actually are kind of a V-shape, and then the sides are actually a wedge because what we're trying to do is to force that weight up. But to your point on the 8K, it's a massive bag, right? Mm -hmm. So you lose a little bit of that. But the other thing, too, with that is, and that's why probably 75, 80% of our packs go out the door with the meat shelf, the pannier. Yeah. Because that will lift that load up about four inches. It's always going to ride at least at the top of your hip belt, where a lot of packs that just sandwich it between the bag, that's going to ride at the bottom of your right. hip belt. So getting that, just that four inch difference makes a huge difference in, in, in the performance on how that weight carries. Yeah. And during our testing, you know, we actually tested that with our own packs. You know, we, we would use the meat shelf and put that the bottom of the weight at the top of the hip belt and put it on, fit it. And then we would drop it on purpose. Mm-hmm. We, would, we would drop it to the bottom of the hip belt and it completely changes the physics of it. Yeah. Because what happens is when that's, when that's high, it drives that weight through your hip structure into your quads, just like it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. If you drop that by four inches, like you say, that also drives that weight, but it misses your hip structure, goes through your sacral region, mm-hmm. and that's where that pain comes from. Mm-hmm. And so it drives that weight lower. It, it, it's just a it's just a physics thing. Well, I feel like I'm using my abs a lot. Yes. Yeah. It's like I'm doing a you perpetual have- crunch, you know, <laughs> right. like on a sit-up, you know. <laughs> right. And then after like four miles, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Yeah. yeah. But one thing about the system, you know, and I think you spoke to it with, with Brady, you know, with you hauling out the moose quarters, with Brady hooking up that, that head. And uh, great job, by the way, on the head. Um, <laughs> Made an awesome picture. That yeah. An awesome picture. Yeah, for sure. But it's simple. It, it's really simple how that pannier and the frame work together when you're just hauling loads. It, mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. really simple. You've got three on the sides, you've got two on the uppers, and that's it. You guys were just at the Western Hunt Expo, and you know people go over there all the time. They throw on the pack, and then they are able to feel it under load, which is one of the things we say. Like, you know, all the packs are pretty dang good when they're not that heavy, mm-hmm. yeah. fifty, sixty pounds. Yeah. yeah. So go over there and and load it like you would, you know, packing out an animal in your camp on your back or an elk, and um. Go over to initial, put it on, and just see what, how it feels. Um, what has been, what is the typical response? What is, have you gotten any responses where you're like, the guy's like, uh, I don't feel any, like this still feels super heavy. Or yeah. like, do you, what do you get? It's, it, it's probably one is of the universal? highlights of the show for us, right? And now it's funny watching all the people that we have working, because we had a, I think we had 14 people in our booth helping us this year. Mm-hmm. And it's neat to watch their reaction because, you know, the person that's trying the weight on, you know, we typically don't tell them that how much weight it is. Mm-hmm. And when they put that on, and then if they go Bronio style, right, where they hang it on the side, yep. they got 150 pounds on their back. And then when you, you always ask them, hey, how much you think it is? And they're always like, oh, maybe 100 pounds. And, you know, but when you actually tell them how much it is, 
it's just pure excitement. And then it's quickly like my pack doesn't feel like this. Yeah. You're right. Yep, yep. With that weight. And um, it's, it's just really neat. I mean, that's what we stre- set out for is to be able to design a pack system that would mm-hmm. carry heavy loads more comfortably. I mean, that's just really what it was all about. Mm-hmm. You know, those old packs like the Dana designs, so those external ones, you'll hear about the Barney's packs a lot from guys up north yeah. carrying out moose. You know, these ex- those external frame packs, they're incredible how they do the same sort of thing that your your pack is able to do based on that external frame design. But it traditionally came with a ton of weight. Right. Yeah. Right? Yep. You're talking base weight is 10, 12 pounds and up. Right. And bulk. In and bulk, bulk yeah. and it's empty, right? That's before you load anything into it, and it is bulky, you know. And and you see uh, over the years when you started to see new packs come out. I remember Mystery Ranch back in the day. I was looking at them in catalogs with Anthony and Ben, and I was like, and it's kind of these internal frame s- styled packs, and we started to get really interested in, you know, they looked pretty sleek. You don't need that big external thing anymore, and and then I think it's like an evolution of of the, pack, the of the hunting pack industry. You see a lot of these super lightweight internal frame with stays and this kind of stuff that that a lot of people went to, which is a great great design, especially day in and day out hiking. It's a lot more fun to carry that pack while you're hunting than some of these external frames. I remember Anthony used a Dana Designs pack for external big external frame. It was like per yellow and orange or something. It was a big old sucker, yeah. but man, when it came to packing out elk and stuff, it was it was a dream to mm-hmm. to to use. Fast forward to today, uh, you guys kind of have brought back that stiffer frame uh, performance, that external frame type performance, but still not quite. Um, it's still look very sleek and, and it's lightweight and lightweight. Like the frame's only nineteen ounces. Yeah, right. It's pretty wild. Now, um, the performance is so much better. Like, it's undeniable. Like you said, when someone puts it on, they kind of can tell. So, I suspect you're going to have, uh, we're going to, you're going to start a new uh, wave of similar packs. You feel it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No question. <laughs> so that means you guys got to get off your butts and really like get the word out. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> No, it is cool to be uh, to be able to use the packs and and um, be part of that. So I want to ask you, Ryan, now that you've used it for last season, mm-hmm. uh, overall takeaways and and uh, why? What is it about the pack? I know the beaver tail thing is like love it. Yep. I mean, I remember him basically saying that's a deal breaker, man. You yeah. don't have that. Um, yeah, if I can't, if I can't, like unzip that zipper and see everything in my bag or I have to fight with like this one side zipper to get into my stuff. Oh, that's, that's old school. I don't, I want no part of that anymore. So <laughs> no, I loved it when you guys changed it and you added that back pocket, the stretch pocket to the back, another beaver tail. And, uh, it's just so perfect for, uh, water storage. You know, I, I put my six liter hydro pack in there mm. and the stretchiness of it, like if I'm going in into a spot and my pack is loaded, you know, you try not to carry water if you don't have to. Right. But then there's that last piece of water, at, at that last piece where you got to fill it and then go to the top. That back pocket, I don't end up having to take everything out and readjust the pack. It's just there and ready for me to now slip that big six liter uh, hydro pack in there full of water and, and go. So that's, yeah, that's a cool feature, but that's not, that's not what sold it for me. There's two things. The volume, so the 8K, but more importantly than that is just how it carries weight, period. It's just a simple answer for me. Uh, I've used a lot of packs and a lot of very comfortable packs and packs that worked, um, but none of them carried the weight as well as this one. So that alone, look, we're fortunate enough to hunt enough that we get to pack a lot of stuff off the mountain. And we all, all know how it sucks, you know, when you're, a hundred plus pounds and you have an uncomfortable pack. Yeah. Um, it sucks. So this, you know, we throw 120 pounds on, which we do often coming out. This just makes it palatable. Yeah. Much mm-hmm. easier 
And so when folks ask me about, you know, why I switched uh, this past year, it's just the weight. It's the weight carry, period. Easy. There's no, uh, the other thing too that's interesting is there's, there's no, um, with that heavy load, we all know, like Ryan said, the heavier it gets, it just sucks. Mm -hmm. And when you get into those really extreme weights, it's like you can only make it so comfortable, you know? But some packs, they really cut off the blood flow yeah. for me below the waist. Yeah. So then I have to loosen the hip belt to an extent where I can keep the blood flowing. But now it just doesn't stick it's all, on the yeah, waist it's on and it's shoulders. all on your shoulders. Yeah. And it's this constant game. And then it's like, well, I'm getting a raw spot, you know, on my lumbar, or my low back or whatever, where the it's chafing, you know, there's all sorts of issues. The heavier it gets, you know, the more these these hot spots develop and when you're doing like multiple loads like with a moose over a course of a couple of days few days you're you know it just stacks up yeah and so to you know with with the with the pack i don't have that uh it's a remarkable how it doesn't cut off circulation below the waist keeps the weight well off the shoulders um yeah it's 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 pretty uh it's pretty, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, and we've had this discussion before. I, f every time I think about it, I'm like, I don't know. It goes back to, um, who are you to design a pack that works like this? You know what I mean? Like, where's your engineering? Were you, were you with, uh, such and such pack company for two decades and you brought all this experience to the, t to the four and now <laughs> you've developed your own independent, like, dude, you're just Dennis in the garage that hunts in Idaho. <laughs> right, right. Like, am I wrong? Weren't you like, yeah. I where's mean, your engineering background? It. Like I had, I <laughs> had one thing. I mean, personally, I had one thing going for me that I dealt with for a number of years and that was a lower back injury. So. It was really hard for me to find a pack that would, and I, I owned them all, mm -hmm. and to, that would carry weight comfortably for me. And, I mean, that was my biggest driver in this was I knew what I liked and I knew what I didn't like, and my body knew what it liked. And so it was more of a, maybe a physical thing for me. And, you know, I mean, we talked about, bag designs and all, all kinds of stuff, you know, what we liked, what we didn't like about different packs and whatnot. And we just really couldn't find no. anything that was, it was a personal deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I know for me personally, that was, that was what drove me in it's, trying to figure something thinking out. Thinking about it from, you know, the 20,000 foot level, 50,000 feet, like looking down, it's like, it's such a departure from the existing popular designs that it, it almost in some ways seemed like it needed someone who had no idea what yeah. they were doing yeah. to come up yeah. with the innovative switch sure. up. And it's well, funny you say that because when we first sat down with this, we had no agenda on what that frame was going to be. Mm -hmm. We were open, wide open. And when we first sat down with engineers on that. It was literally let's white sheet anything i remember one time they even threw wood up there mm. right yeah you I mean, told me it was just like wait a second. i know that's probably not going to be the right solution <laughs> but i mean when i when i say we white sheeted it yeah, yeah. we did there was You're nothing like, that, that wasn't yeah. on the table and um i think there's a lot of truth brian to what you just said whether that's with backpacks or any business getting a fresh perspective to come in that really isn't just married to an idea yeah does open up opportunity for innovation I mean, we've seen it with peaks. Mm -hmm. Like Bryce says, That's I got these trekking poles. Uh, and I'm like, dude, everybody has trekking poles. Like the, you go to REI, there's like a hundred of them on a shelf yeah. there. What, what is it that, uh, you've got that's different? No, no, Brian, I, I kind of think this and this and I, yeah, there's all these poles, but price point, value, performance, weight, like for hunters, we want this X, Y, Z. And, Man, you get your hands on it, you're like, it it does all the things we want it to do. Um, and doesn't have the drawbacks of the other the other stuff on the market. But then you fast forward to some other things like the teepee. Who is Bryce to be designing a teepee? And again, there's no he's more of a spreadsheet guy. Mm -hmm. 
than he was, mm-hmm. but his mind still, you know, we, we have, we have Jason helping us out doing a lot of design and he does have that, that background mm-hmm. in uh, engineering and even tent manufacturing, but we would be, it would be uh, a, a, a gross misunderstanding to believe that he's the primary engine because he and Bryce together, um, Bryce, Bryce is a lot more of a designer than I ever, I, than I thought in the beginning. He's got a great mind and ideas. And when it comes to the headlamp, the gators, like everything, um, we come with problems and he comes up with solutions. Mm -hmm. We come up with solutions and they're like, eh, more often than not, you know, they're like, okay, noted. And then they come up with something even better than what we came up with to fix the problem. Yeah. But it makes for a, a, a great team. Even with you guys, it's like when we were able to talk to you about the bag and say, let's do this, let's do that and get prototypes and prototypes and prototypes till you evolve it into, like Ryan said, like perfect design for what it is we're trying to do. It's powerful because we, we live out there, right? Mm-hmm. you know? hundred days, 150 days, sometimes out there using the pack. And until you spend that kind of time out there, the testing and the living out of it really tells you how it should be built. Mm -hmm. And there's no shortcut to that. And very few, I'm even surprised when a company brings a product to market and, and you and I can look at it and we can go, you came up with that in a boardroom. That nobody tested that. Right. Nobody used that. And sure enough, you know, it becomes a, a real stinker of a product and people quickly find out it's yeah. junk. But it looked good on the whiteboard. Right, right. And I think, you know, to your point, all the feedback we got from you guys as we went through this whole testing route, you know, got back from Dave and a, and a host of other folks. The great thing about that is that works perfect for the 8K. But all of that transfers over to the 5K, to the 3K. Mm-hmm. So that same innovation, that same design that works well for what you guys do. Hey, for somebody that's only going for five to seven days, you can get that same innovation and, and functionality yeah. of a 5K. If you're going for one to three days, you can still get that with a 3K bag. So right. you know, all of that is super important to us. And we've, we've said from day one, you know, we're, we're going to surround ourselves with people that candidly are better than what we do, mm-hmm. right? And when we do that, then we can take that knowledge and build something, hopefully, that that, that is fantastic and works for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, Ryan, you've used a lot of packs mm-hmm. over the years. Um, what do you think is the common mistake that that uh, hunters make when they run, when, when they're getting a backpack or, or when they're using a backpack? Most common mistake? Ooh. Um... I mean, the first answer that jumps to me is they always go too small because I'm always trying to encourage them to go on <laughs> longer trips and spend more time out there. Uh, and, you know, you see that when you see stuff tied to the outside of the bag or strapped mm-hmm. on or they're having to use the load shelf to go into a spot and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, that annoys the crud out of me. Yeah. I just say pack a few extra ounces and get a bigger bag. So, um, Great think- insight there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> the biggest, one of the biggest questions I get DMing emails, whatnot is I, I don't want the 8k. It just seems utterly ginormous. Um, tell me what I should get instead. Well, well, th- and we were just talking about this the other day. I think, uh, one of the most common questions I get when they ask about the 8k is, but how does it work as a day bag? Like, but what about the smaller chips? What if I'm not going right. tighten it up, flatten it out? That thing flattens down to a pancake if you just tighten it up and mm-hmm. use the straps. And it is just as good as any other day bag. You're sacrificing a few ounces to have one pack that pertinent fits every trip. So that's for cool. me, that's it's the perfect bag. Yeah, and I think you know, when you talk about how flat it gets, and mm-hmm. that was one thing I would say with the 4 and the, the 6K, right, that we struggled a little bit with. But now with having that beaver tail, which – the shape of that now gives structure mm-hmm. to where that thing will stand up mm-hmm. way better, more so than the drawstring ever did. It would kind of fold in. Yeah. Yep. So I think it, 
really I've used, lays flat. I've used packs that were very large, and I hate to like rip on Seek Outside, but it's the one that jumps out to me where you know there's been these large volume packs, but it was like I just had this floppy bean bag on my back, and it, mm-hmm. it's just all over the place, and I couldn't tighten it up. So you know that's the one pack that jumped out at me is that does not work as a day bag. It just doesn't. Hard to get it fitted in there. So now there's no issues with these larger packs, these larger volume packs, just working perfectly for a day, a week, a two week, all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I would agree that having the capacity to go larger. You know, if you cinch those three buckles up on the side, you cinch the bottom up, uh, use the roll top. You've got a five k bag pretty handily without all this excess material just being everywhere you know it really is it really is expandable like that now now there's guys that don't plan on ever or having the time to do a 10 day yeah then don't get the 8k that's that's where like a 5k is going to be perfect for you if you don't plan or have the capabilities of doing a 10 day or two week trip then yeah, save the extra ounces. You're never going to use that space, most likely. So a 5K would work perfectly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you guys a question real quick. So I'm thinking back to your epic bear hunt where the three of you um, killed five bears in a very short period mm-hmm. of time. Mm-hmm. So if you would have had a pack like ours, or if you would have had our, our packs yeah. back then, Talk to me about what that would do for recovery, because you guys are packing out a lot of weight in a short period of time. What does having our pack and the way it carries heavy weight, what would that do for a situation like that? So, um, man, I, I think I'm thinking about back to that trip. What was that five years ago? Yeah, it was a while ago. Something yeah. like that. I remember that one. Not only was it a lot of weight, it was hot. Oh, there's the dickens on that <laughs> yeah. trip. I was torched. There was more ticks on that hunt than I think one of them. I mean, that was a tick, tick yeah. hunt mm-hmm. right there. Yeah. And, you know, when you're packing hides out, which there's very few states where you don't, you're not required to. So you're most likely packing the hide out. That's a whole nother set of volume, you know. Um, you got to think about that as well, which leads me back to going with the 8K yeah. because, uh, you know, when you got all that meat from a bear, say just your typical really good size, you know, Western States bear, 250 pound bear, that is a lot of weight, but it's mm-hmm. a lot of volume yeah. with the head, all the meat and the hide. So you're taking, if you want to one trip that out, you, you got some work to do and you have to have the volume like the AK for us yeah. to be able to do it. And we've done it, but that was a multiple trip, mm-hmm. obviously with the five bears, that was do you trips. remember how many trips it was for the three of you? Well, we, they were spread out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we had taken three bears in this one drainage. And so that was... We each had the full bear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they were large bears. The, yeah. the other so area... Of of hide and all that. The other area was a long ways from the base camp. So it was, it was a couple of days. It was, it was a good hard day of carrying... Two bears between three guys, Mm -hmm. the whole, all of it, right? right? I remember that trip. I mean, it's probably, I said this on a podcast the other day. I I think it is one of my all-time favorite hunts of my life, you know? It was the first time Ryan and I really hunted together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, um, there was just something there that clicked. You know, the, uh, the brotherhood, the, the fun Lusk is an amazing dude. And yep. the three of us together, it was kind of like a dream team and, yep. and we all pulled our, our, our weight in different ways and, uh, magic happened, you know, yeah, for sure. And magic happened and there's a lot of suffering involved in yeah. that one. I mean, we had serious elevation ups and downs and serious heavy loads on our backs. And we put a lot of distance, you know, throughout yeah. that trip. So it was one of those trips where it was so dang hard. You're always going to think back at those ones and, and remember <laughs> yeah. it the best, you know, like it was so hard that it was, it was memorable and it will be forever. So 
I I mentioned this the other day that I think it was probably uh, as far as being wrecked that that hunt left me the most swollen, sore and wrecked of all the hunts I think I've ever done. First of all, the volume of the hunt of the of the I wasn't quite as much of the hunt as backpack hunting as I had done. The day-to-day volume of long distance heavy hikes, this was pretty new to me still. Yeah at this scale so that took its toll because i just wasn't i wasn't conditioned now if i were to redo that hunt it would pretty much be pretty easy yeah it would be fairly like now it's just the standard yeah yeah but back then i was pushing the limits and i had brought these crispy colorados which had like a five flex Flex rating or something (laughs) like they were the worst and uh because i had been testing you know them on these steep up and downs well they were great if you were going straight up and straight down they 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 did feel better but the amount of just easy walk and trail and flat and gradual that's 80 percent oh yeah of the hiking it was it was awful and the blisters the soreness the foot pain that sifa boot was terrible so yeah and just you know relating this to packs i was using a a different pack on that trip, a pack that I really wanted to love, you know, I wanted to love it. I liked the bag design of it, but it did not carry weight well for me. I couldn't keep that thing from sliding down my hips. It was a fitting issue. And so, you know, I didn't have a lot of complications with that hunt, but I remember, you know, it's it's one of those bags where you're just constantly popping it up on your shoulders. Mm. You know, I think if anybody's, everybody who's done this enough, you know that bag, the yeah. one that just doesn't fit you right, doesn't stick, doesn't stick to your back. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, when you're carrying that much weight over long periods of time, that many miles, and you have a pack that's slipping constantly, it's just frustration, Yeah, total yeah. frustration. So I made some switches after, you know, after that one. Um, I just could not get that thing to sit right. And it would have been a completely different pack out. Mm-hmm. If I would have had one that just perched up on my back, it stuck, it was fitted well, and I wasn't constantly just like humping it up on my shoulders. You you could you could compare that hunt to like hunting with Pedro a few years later and Brady, mm. where we're dialed for similar levels of extreme distances, climbs. We're we're thriving in the the hot tent. We. We, our feet are no issue. Uh, we're not tired. We're well nourished. The, the pack is efficient in carrying these loads. You can look at the moose one, right? Like the distance is covered. We don't break down and have the same issues that we did doing a similar hunt. Right. Like I was wrecked. There's a video of me standing there talking about, you know, it's in the evening, it's time to go. And my knuckles, my hands are like sausages and I can't. I can't bend my fingers, you know, and everything throughout the whole body was in too much sugar, bad, you know, I had, I had things just not dialed. Now, like Ryan said, it's, that's just like most hunts average and we thrive and we don't experience that. Now the pack itself, your question back to your main question, Dennis, just being able to use, for example, my initial ascent in Alaska, which, you know, carrying out a moose for two and a half days all day long for a couple of days uh, plus the loads you're just carrying with the camera gear and and the day-to-day stuff i mean i don't i don't feel the fatigue and the and stuff that i did when i used equipment that wasn't as efficient you know i mean just especially when it comes to carrying the meat being able to put the meat on the pack board up high kind of up high with the pack shelf and all that and have it loaded just right, not shift, you know, yeah. efficient. And then go down, ditch it, come back, grab another load, go down, ditch it, come back, spend the night, go back the next day, you know, grab another load. It's like, it's just uh, it's just an efficient carrying tool. Keeps the back from firing up and right. the, yeah. the knees and things going bad. So And that keeps you going day after day. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we truly believe that, I mean, the way this pack carries and the the way it's been designed f- from a heavy load carrying standpoint, we believe it's going to add years to guys' 
hunting careers. Yeah. We really do. You can really get away with, I think, when you're only going five, ten days a year. Uh, Brad and I had a conversation the other day having this very discussion. When you're committed to, let's say your your start your hunt start August twentieth, and you're going to be backpacking for the next sixty days, with just a couple of days in between hunts at home before you turn around and go back out again, from moose to elk to mule deer, you know, and some rugged steep ass mountains. When you do that, what you eat the pack you use the boots you're wearing yeah. like all of this stacks up you don't get the you have to be still functioning on week four mm -hmm. and you still got four more weeks to go you don't get to be the guy that just goes out half-assed for 10 days comes home and then recovers you know when i got back from that that bear hunt with lusk and ryan I was wrecked for a while, you know. It took some time yeah. to, to go on another hunt right after that. Would have the hunt would have suffered. Like I would have not been able to go after the animal I wanted when I wanted to. I'd have been hamstrung by my fitness. I'd have been hamstrung by you know my recovery rates and all this other stuff. As it was, a lot of what pushed all three of us was, you know, me. It's I'd rather die then be the weak link. So when we saw the bear all the way over there, it's like, find a way. Let's go. Go. Because I'm not going to let Ryan, like, beat me, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I might not get there as fast as him, but I'll get there. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, that goes back down to, like, a mental toughness, but it, it really takes you only so far. And, and as you get older, um, it's just so much more efficient to be capable than it is to be, you know, just tough. Yeah. yeah. Livesey is a prime example of that. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> He's more. not here. We should just throw him under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to in this next uh, this next presentation we're doing. <laughs> this bear uh, how many times have you heard Livesey say this? He uh, he works himself into shape. Yeah. Into the season. How's that working for him? <laughs> not very good. <laughs> He, he, the first hunt we really did together, he was like 75 hard, Yeah, you know, Yeah, which I think it was more like 25 hard, but I can't verify <laughs> where he, he was pretty religious about trying to be in shape, but he didn't want to, he knew that the hunt invite was coming, mm -hmm. you know, but he didn't want to, he, he wanted all these days of hunting to get himself ready so that when he hunted with us, he wouldn't, he'd be able to stick with us. Yeah. And he did. Um, he did. Mm -hmm. But the strategy of him hunting to get in shape, the cyclical nature of Livesey's beer drinking on the off season and the, the monsters and the, I, the I, bad diet. I think we're seeing right now what we, what is inevitably going to, happen every time you take that approach he's starting to get dinged up he's got some mm -hmm. foot issues and knee and it's like he's starting to see some stuff and that's just gonna happen if yeah. if you don't do this all year round um real quick though i wanted to talk about like i think it's funny when i think back on my evolution when i started to where i am now and i can relate this to backpacking but you know, back in the day, we all put way too much crap in our backpacks. Snickers. When you're first starting out, you Twix. don't you don't count <laughs> ounces, right? You just, man, I might need this. I right. might need this. Right. I might need two Packing pairs of your pants. Fears. Yeah. yeah, I might need two pairs of boots, you know, back there. All these stupid things, <laughs> right. you know. And so you got crap tied all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you slowly progress to where you're like shaving every half ounce possible. And then you hit this point where it's getting ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. You're cutting your toothbrush in half and all this stupid <laughs> stuff, you know? Um, but now you get asked all the time, like, well, you're like, what's your pack weight? What's the pack weight? Is it, you know, can, can you shave a few ounces here, a few ounces there? And I don't really even think about it anymore. So there's pounds extra now than there wasn't maybe 15 years ago when I was in that uber lightweight 
every half ounce matters. Um, now, maybe that was just a function of you feel every pound with a cruddy backpack. <laughs> you really do. Um, but nowadays it's like I'm, I'm adding extra ounces for comfort. Uh-huh. Maybe that comes with age. I don't know. But I also, I don't feel it. I don't feel like if I go in with a 55-pound backpack versus a 50-pound backpack of old, it feels the same. It's just like if it's 50 pounds or 65 pounds, it feels the same. Yeah. yeah. It's not an issue. And so I'm not counting ounces. Obviously, you want to do things strategically. If you can save ounces, you save ounces. But we add stuff in now. You know, people... One piece of gear, like take the the GSM micro light water bottle. People think it's hilarious that we pack a 13 ounce water bottle. Right. But there's some dang good advantages to packing it. Mm -hmm. And it offers up a solution to frozen water and hot water. So we just take it. Just take it. We don't even think about it. Yeah. But again, I relate that to better gear, our backpacks, especially these ones with the stiffer frame. Man, I just don't notice it. You could throw a 50 pound back there and it's. 65 feels the same. And it's funny because that's something that we hear a lot at the shows, right? Where you've got guys that are maybe up there a little bit in their age and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm never going to carry 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. Okay. But wouldn't it be great to carry 70 pounds? It feels like 50. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And, uh, yeah. And that that's one of those things for those guys that, you know, because you guys do amazing things. You guys are at next level in what you guys are capable of doing. A lot of folks can't do that. They can't. But can they go carry one elk quarter out? Absolutely. And if you can make it easier, back to your point, Dennis, where where we firmly believe it's going to extend years on the mountain because it's less wear and tear. I remember you talking about a water bottle that you would literally lay on at night because your lower back hurts so bad, Uh you know, prior to using our pack. If we can get rid of that stuff and the guys can go back out for three, four, five days comfortably, they're going to have a way better experience. There, I believe there are packs that you need to that perform really well when you're in shape to use them. In other words, you've got to have some muscles built up Mm -hmm. because the pack is a little bit deficient, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of its support. So if you hike with it every day and you, you rock with it all the time and you use it all the time, which we did, I was like, this is a pretty damn good pack. But then when you step away from that pack for six months, um, and you're you're not using your back muscles as much and your shoulders and stuff to hold that, which was wearing and tearing on the body. Like it just needed, and that fitness goes away. Then you put that pack on and you do a really intense hunt. You're at your smoke. So I'd say with the with your pack, one of the things that's kind of crazy is I would always hike a lot before season with heavy loads using every pack I used, mm-hmm. so that when I got into the hunt um i was fit at carrying those loads with that particular pack and uh it wasn't until i used your pack and then went back that i realized how much uh, more muscle i was using with the other packs Good point. i was using a lot more muscle which i had built up to so i didn't realize uh that it wasn't as efficient you know s- to that degree until i I went from the, your pack for six months and then went two weeks with a different one. I was like, oh man, I'm using so much more back muscle than I was just because the pack is needs it. You know, it doesn't quite have the same support. Um, but your backpacks are, are uh, they're huge. Everybody knows it. You're, you know, you, you have to carry this all day, every day. It's the most physical part. It's, it's rucking all the time, right? I went on a hunt years ago uh, to the Eagle Cap Wilderness with Anthony and Ben, my my buddies. We got we had pack goats. I had five, four or five goats. They each were carrying about thirty pounds, and we went eighteen miles in to this place, and we killed a bull elk. And we we were so stoked, and we loaded. It was an adventure, right? And uh, we had no idea what we were doing. I hiked in there with a Badlands 2200 with the bat wings. I remember those. You know? Yeah. And I thought it was the coolest pack, by the way. Mm-hmm. You know, it expanded. It had that meat shelf thing that came up and the butterfly wings on the back and absolutely no frame. <laughs> like, it's like a gunny sack. It was like a Jansport backpack. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Uh, so we get in there and we kill this bull. And we utterly underestimated the goat's capabilities. Um, you know, we, they, they got tired. 
and they were spent by the time we got all the way in there and they had been carrying a lot of our stuff and they were breaking down because we didn't have them in shape as well. And we had, you know, I had these ghosts maybe a year and uh, we had a couple good ones and a couple few rejects. And, uh, and when we hiked out, we ended up because the goats didn't have what it took, you know, limping and having problems. I ended up carrying a lot more than we ever planned on right. with a 2200. With no frame. With no, I mean, virtually no frame. And that was the worst backpacking trip and decision I ever made was, <laughs> was the 2200. <laughs> and I still see guys today rocking packs like that. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I, hunted, uh, I hunted for years with that Black's Creek pack back in, in Idaho, in North Country, Idaho. And here's the greatest pack in the world <laughs> until I put meat on it. <laughs> Or any kind of load. It was terrible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But we just had to be tougher back then, I guess. So are we creating softer people? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> pretty much. Are we opening the, we what I got to say his pack. What I got out of Brian's prior discussion was, if there's ever a pack for Livesey, it's this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be in the best of shape to be able to carry weight. No. He was really railing on us before was, we left man. down there at the Bear Tour. How you know he's he he's got he's one waiting. of our packs from 1980 that was a hand <laughs> yeah. hand me down or something, <laughs> dude. Livesey will be the uh, he's the martyr of everything. Like he'll martyr himself and right. he'll tell you all about how he's the one that gets screwed over. <laughs> That's his theme. Running, th- I get screwed by everybody. Feel sorry for me. And I remember I was at his house this last year. And he was he was going on and on uh, about you know how Amy doesn't take care of him and how Amy you know he's pulling his shtick and everything and Amy's just kind of insulted and I was like don't worry Amy I, I he does this to me constantly right like we're all now like dialed in like it's just noise now <laughs> as he <laughs> talks about how hard he has it uh, uh, the gear he doesn't have yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't have that. I don't have this. Where's my stove? I'm not, I'm just not popular enough. Uh, so yeah, it's been uh, it's been good though. It's nice to have llamas. Brian's got goats now, but it, like you said, even if we're not carrying out 110 pounds or 20 pounds, to be able to carry a you know 60 pounds and have it feel like 45 or 50, Thank it all adds up. It does add up. Yep. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap up. We're going to get back down to the tour. Yep. Uh, folks want to come and uh, try on a pack. They can always make an appointment here at the uh, headquarters here in Caldwell, right? Absolutely. Yep. Get online, initial ascent, look it up. Yep. Come down here. You guys uh, are down here a lot. Yeah, we are. Pretty much every day. Yeah, every day. And uh, come down and actually try it on if you're in this Idaho area. Mm-hmm. But uh, online, you guys can uh, work out helping guys too like they can reach out how can they get a hold of you so they can just go to our website right mm-hmm. initialscent.com we also have a youtube channel which we have a ton of videos on the initial scent there on youtube just how to fit a pack you know how to do accessories but at the end of the day if somebody has questions yeah give us a call we're gonna get we're gonna get answers for them you know one thing i love about about what you guys have as well as there's a couple other companies in the backpack space similar to you it's clean and it's not confusing. There's a few models, boom, boom, boom. That's what you need. Yeah. And a million designs and names, and you don't have that. It's not confusing. It's keep not, it simple. Keep it simple. I, I mean, if it were up to me and Ryan, we, we, you'd only sell the 8K. <laughs> one, one pack. And Ryan, <laughs> one it would be one color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be real simple. Boy, that'd make our lives. <laughs> oh, <easier>. boy. <laughs> would it ever. Yeah. So, anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment in the description field. If you got any questions, drop them there. We try to get back to everybody uh, that leaves a comment on our on our channel there, YouTube or Rumble. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Stay gritty.